Hi everyone. So in today's class, we will be discussing regarding the structure of human sperm. So what basically we should know, what is a sperm? Sperm is a motile male gamete which is being involved in the process of fertilization. So this sperm is microscopic which is generally around 50 to 60 micrometers in its length. So in case of the sperm, sperm is being formed in the seminiferous tubule of the testis by a process called as spermatogenesis. So the sperm which is a male gamete, so this sperm is being having four main regions. The first one is called as head, the second one is neck, third one is middle piece and the last one is called as tail. So let's get into the details of the human sperm. So in the first part of the sperm, there is a presence of the head. What does a head consist of? Head consists of mainly two parts. The first one is called as the nucleus. Nucleus generally consists of the haploid set of the paternal chromosomes which are being involved in the formation of the zygote thereby the embryo. And surrounding the nucleus, the three-fourth part, three-fourth part of the nucleus is being surrounded by a cap-like structure which is called as acrosome. So this acrosome is being derived from a cell organelle that is called as Golgi body. So this acrosome, why acrosome is being necessary? So generally we say that acrosome is being involved or it helps the sperm to penetrate into the ova. So how the acrosome will help in the penetration of the sperm into the ova? That is because this acrosome consists of a group of enzymes which we collectively call them as sperm lysins. So these enzymes which are present, so they are, first one is called as hyaluronidase, second one is called as corona penetrating enzyme, third one is called as sona lysin or it is also called as acrosin. So what is the function of the hyaluronidase? Hyaluronidase is the enzyme which dissolves the hyaluronic acid which is being present between the two corona radiata cells. So generally the function of this hyaluronic acid is to fix the corona radi radiata cells permanently or stiff. So that is being dissolved by the enzyme that is called as hyaluronidase. Next is corona penetrating enzyme which dissolves this corona, penetra corona radiata part and thereby it facilitates the sperm to penetrate to through that of the corona radiata. And the last one is called as zona lysin or acrosin. Where you can see zona means zona pellucida and lysis means breakdown. So all these three enzymes which are being present, as I said, they are being called as sperm lysins. So they help in the penetration of the sperm which are being present in the part that is called as acrosome. So the next part after the head is the neck. Neck is said to be the smallest part in case of the human sperm. So this neck generally consists of two centrioles. First one is called as the proximal centriole and the second one is called as distal centriole. Proximal centriole is being located just below the base of the nucleus and this proximal centriole has a vital function that is it is involved in the formation of the first cleavage after the fertilization and uh, another function is said to be that proximal centriole even helps on it generally helps in the fusion of the male and the female pronucleus during the process of the amphimixis or syngamy and perpendicular to that of the proximal centriole is the presence of the distal centriole. So this distal centriole results in the formation of the axial filaments which are being present in the next part of the sperm that is called as middle piece. Right. So let's start with the next part that is called as middle piece. Middle piece consists of mainly three parts. The first part is the mitochondria. So in the, your classes, in the lower classes also you have learned that mitochondria generally are said to be the powerhouses of the cell as because they generate energy. 
So these mitochondrias which are present, they are 10 to 14 in number and they are being spirally coiled. And this entire mitochondria are being surrounded by a mitochondrial sheath. So that is called as living kern. And uh, other than that of the mitochondria, there are presence of the bundle of axial filaments and these bundle of axial filaments are collectively called as axoneme. So this axoneme and nebulcon together they are being covered by an another membrane. So that another membrane is being called as manchet. It is called as manchet. And at the lower part of the middle piece we are able to see there is presence of an another centriole here which is called as a ring centriole. Now what is the function of this ring centriole which is being located at the base of the middle piece? So ring centriole generally acts as a barrier between the middle piece as well as the principal piece of the TL. Thereby this ring centriole gives the stability to that of the sperm. And the middle piece generally also as it consists of the axoneme, as it consists of the mitochondria, this gives the main support to that of the structure of the sperm. So last part is what we have is the tail. So the tail which is being present, so main function of this tail is it is involved in swimming. It, as it consists of the flagella, so this flagella when it continuously beat, so that facilitates the sperms to move. That is what I said, the sperm is microscopic, motile, male gamete. So that motility is being brought about by the tail. So this entire tail is said to be the longest portion in the sperm. So this tail is being divided into two parts. First part is called as the principal piece. The other one is called as end piece. So principal piece is being covered by a thin membrane and uh, the end piece which is present that is without any membrane. So that is completely uh, naked. Henceforth it is called as the end piece. Okay. So this is all about the human sperm. Thank you.